In this tutorial, we will take a look at features and functionality of a SharePoint survey. A survey is a great way to collect information from vendors, clients, and employees. For example, a survey can be used to poll employees about medical benefits satisfaction or preferences for a holiday party. SharePoint also provides summaries of the survey responses. First, we'll take a look at an existing survey on the IT site called the Site Usage Survey. This survey will provide feedback from users regarding their new intranet site, how easy it is to navigate and find information they are looking for. Then we will create a survey from scratch to demonstrate how easy it is to build a survey. So to get started here, I'll navigate to the IT site. There is a link to the survey on the quick launch. So I'll click the link to open the survey. The survey overview displays showing us the name, description, when it was created, and how many responses have been submitted so far. To submit a response, click Respond to the Survey. So the survey window opens. We have four questions in the survey. And my first question here, did you find the information you were looking for? And I'll select yes. Was the information easy to find? Yes. And then we have what's called a rating scale series of questions. And here we select the ease of use of the training modules. Yes, they were very easy to use, very informative, and appropriate length. For this last question, what kind of information would you like to see more in the future? I have several selections here to choose from, or I can select this last option, specify your own value, and type in another value that's not presented as a choice. For this example, I'm going to select Training Modules, and then I'll click Finish to complete the survey. For the person managing the survey, SharePoint provides two ways to view the survey results. You can click on Show a Graphical Summary of Responses. For each question, it provides a count of each response, the percentage of responses for each answer, and a graphical view of responses for a quick visual comparison. For the rating question, where we selected a value between 1 and 5 representing poor to excellent, it displays the percent of each value selected. Another way to view survey results is to view each individual response. Since this was created as an anonymous survey, the names of the users do not display in the Created by column. You can open each survey submitted by double-clicking on the View Response number. And this shows you for one individual how they responded to each of those questions. So now we will create a survey from scratch. Before you create a survey, it is a good idea to map out the questions that you want to ask and the type of answers that you want to receive. For example, do you want people to type a response, choose from a list, or select a date? So for this example, I will create a customer service survey on the marketing site. To get started, I'll select Site Actions, then More Options, and then I'll choose to filter by list, and then on the right-hand side, I click on Survey. On the far right, I'll click in the name box, type a name in for the survey. After typing the name, I'll click on More Options. And if you want, you can enter a description to let the users know what the survey is about. Next, I can choose whether or not to display a link to the survey on the quick launch, and I'll leave that at Yes. Down in the Survey Options, we're first asked Show Usernames and Survey Results. The default is yes. However, you can make it anonymous like the survey I just demonstrated by selecting no. But for this example, we'll leave this at yes. The second question asks if users can respond to the same survey multiple times. The default is no. And we'll leave that at the default as well. And then we'll click Create at the bottom. And our next screen lets us create the first question. So I'll enter the question in the text box here. Below the question, we choose what type of answer we want to provide, whether it's going to be a single line of text, multiple lines of text, multiple choice where we provide the choices for them to select from, a rating scale like we saw in the first example. You can see SharePoint provides you with a lot of different options. So I'm going to leave this at a choice question. Next, we can indicate whether or not this question is required to be answered. The default is no, and for this I'm going to select yes. Because I selected choice question, I'm provided with this box where I can type each of the choices I want to provide for the answer, 
and each choice is entered on a separate line as demonstrated here with the sample text. Then I can choose how I want to display those choices, either as a drop-down menu, radio buttons, or check boxes which would allow multiple selections, which really doesn't apply to this question. I'll leave this at the default choice of radio buttons. And if I select yes here for allow fill-in choice, that would allow the users to add their own choice if they don't want to select one of the three that I've provided. But I'll leave that at no. I can specify a default value to display for the answer, but I'm just going to leave that blank. The branching logic section gives us the ability to skip over questions that are not applicable. It will present a user with a different sequence of questions depending how they answered a previous question. So if our first question is, are you a customer? And our second question is, rate our customer service, then we want to skip over the second question if the answer no, that they are not a customer. Branching logic cannot be defined until all of your questions have been created, so we will have to come back to this later. So for now we're finished with our first question. I just scroll to the bottom and click on the next question button. In our second question here, we're going to ask them to rate our service. And this is going to be a rating scale question. We're not going to require that this is responded to. And because we selected this as a rating scale, we're provided with this box where we type each of the questions that we want them to rate. So I've entered three areas for them to rate us on, the response time, knowledge, and helpfulness. Number range is the numeric scale you provide for them to rate the questions. The default is from 1 to 5. You can select a different value from the box up to 20. I'm going to leave this at the default of 5. The range text appears above the range numbers to describe the meaning of the scale. For this question, I'm going to change the first range text, the low, to poor. I'll leave average, and instead of high, I'm going to use excellent. And the NA option doesn't apply here, so I'm going to uncheck that option. I'll go down, select next question to enter the third question here. So my third question is, when will you make your next purchase? So I'm going to leave this as a choice type question. So I'll enter my choices in here. So I'll provide them with the choices to select from one month, three months, six months, or a year. And then I'll all select yes here for fill in the choice so they can enter their own answer. So I finished entering the three questions for my survey, so I'll select the finish. That returns me to the survey settings screen. Here you see the three questions that were created. And as it stands now, the first question is asking, are you a current customer? The second question, rate our service. If they select no, that they are not a current customer, we really shouldn't be asking them to rate our service. We'd really prefer that it just skips down to the third question, asking when they will make their purchase. So to accomplish this, we'll have to add branching to this first question. So I'll click on the question to open that back up, and then I'll scroll down to the branching section. For this question, there are three possible answers. They can respond occasionally, on a regular basis, or not yet. For each question, I can choose the branching option, what the next question should be. So the, for the first two questions, it should just flow to the second question, so I don't have to define any special branching. But for the third question, I want it to skip the, the rate our service question and go right to when will you make your next purchase. And then I'll choose OK. So I'll use the breadcrumb trail to return to the survey. I'll click on respond to the survey. You'll notice the first question displays by itself. That's because of the branching. The next question displayed depends on the answer selected here. So for this time through the survey, I'm going to select that I'm an occasional customer. And then I'll choose next. And then the second two questions display. The rating question, which I'll answer. The response time is four. Knowledge is a five. Helpfulness is a five. Will you make, when will I make my next purchase? I'll say within six months. And then I'll choose finish. Now I'd like to take the survey again, but this time choose that I'm not a customer. But if you remember when we first created this survey, I selected to not allow multiple responses. So to change that option, I'm going to go to settings and then survey settings. That's found under title description and navigation. And down here, allow multiple responses. I'm going to select that as yes. And then I'll return to the survey. 
respond to the survey. So now that it's time to the first question, I'm going to select that I'm not yet a customer. Choose next. You'll notice it does not display that rating scale question asking about the customer service. Just ask the last question, when will I make my next purchase? I'll select within a year, and then I'll select finish. So you can see how the branching logic can control the flow of the survey.